my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. I thought that I would ease into the New Year's with a little bit of an update on my two tanks. So I'll give you an update on how the Lake Malawi cichlids are going, which are in here. And then also I'm going to show you my Lake Tanganyikan cichlids and how they've been going. And especially as well, some of the breeding behavior that I've been seeing in here, which I think has been really, really cool. In this Tanganyikan tank, I've got a bunch of different types of Tanganyikan cichlids. I've got Neotretocephalus, I've got Trophius, I've got Leilupi, I've got some black calvis, I've got some gold comps in there, and then I've got some attenuatus, which are these long predatory kind of fish, and I've also got these ventralis as well, or feather fin cichlids with these really long, beautiful fins, which I got from Atlas Aquarium a little while ago. And I've also got a very special red tail salmon cichlid, I think is the like layman term name for it, that I recently got gifted from Aquarium Central from Nigel as well, which is a beautiful fish and has been settling in really nicely. But I'm really excited to actually talk about some of the breeding that's been going on in here because I've had really great luck with breeding in here. None of the fry have actually grown up and survived because they get predated on and just eaten at some point. But the Neotreps in particular have had a few different like clutches of fry. And so I think this is their third or fourth now. And I'm gonna show you some of the babies because they're, they're really cool. And they're getting quite big. So each time they grow a little bit more, they get a little bit better at protecting them. And then the Leilupi, I don't believe there are babies in there right now, but they've got a really nice little hole that they've dug like under this big boulder here. It is the hardest thing ever to film because of the angle, this glass. So this here is a rimless tank. It's a water box 7225. It weighs like 280 kilos because the glass is so thick. You can probably see if I put the camera up here, have a look at how thick that glass here is. It does not do well when I'm trying to film on an angle and they basically have like a little hole in here that goes all the way down and they can come out the other side over here. So just there and then on the other side too they can come out over there. A little tunnel system that the Leilupi have created and every now and then I'll see the female hanging out in there and I'll see a little bit of fry but I haven't been able to film them because of where they are. The Ventralis, I saw the female holding some babies quite a while ago but I don't think I've seen any breeding since then and that was a couple of months back. You can see the female just here, she's a little bit lighter than the male. She's coming out, there's the male just there. As far as breeding goes, so I think I didn't really want to breed them, that, that's not my plan with them, but I think this is the way that I set it up is something that made it natural for them to breed because I once the Leilupi bred, I did a little bit of research just about these guys. The females and the males, they pair up for life so they can be a little bit picky about who they actually pair up with. So your best odds is to put like a group of say six or eight in a tank together and then just see who naturally pairs up and hope that you've got some males and females in there. The way that I actually designed this tank is these rocks are stacked from the bottom, either egg crate or rock. And then once the rock and the hardscape was in there, and then I filled the sand in. That's really important with African cichlids because they dig so much. If you were to build your rock structure on top of your sand, you would end up having your rock structure collapse for sure. You can just see all of the digging that's gone on all through here. And if that wasn't sitting like on a crate there, that would have collapsed long ago, even in here too. All of down here, I'm pretty sure you can actually see the glass now. And this Texas holy rock is really, really, really heavy. That's this rock here. It's a type of limestone that helps to raise the pH and buffer it, so to protect it from having swings if you introduce any water that's a lower pH. That rock there, much heavier as well than this rock, which is why this rock here is called lava stone, but it's like a black type of lava stone. I was more willing to stack this rock. In terms of how the African cichlids have been going too, these guys have been going really well. So I finished their gill flukes treatment. I had a few people comment on that video as well, and they suggested that it definitely could be aggression related too. So especially since we're in summer here in Australia, the temperature went up a few degrees. So it normally sits at around 26 degrees, but with some really hot weeks in summer, 
it was sitting at around 28 or 29 degrees just because of the air temperature and that can sometimes spike aggression in Lake Malawi cichlids or just African cichlids in general. Thank you so much for everyone who left those comments and who let me know like what you think could be going on. I think that you could be right. I think that it might have been a mix of things that it could have been aggression that caused it and then I know that I have flukes in this tank. I always have had flukes in it. Um, I think a lot of tanks have flukes but just at levels where it's manageable but then once you get a change and there's more aggression then if a fish is getting picked on it gets stressed its immune system's not so great I think the life cycle of flukes gets quicker when the temperature goes up as well I read in some koi ponds and stuff that that's a common thing that happens like once the temperature gets warmer uh, you can see an increase in flukes as well so I think we might have had a bit of a mix, but I do believe that doing the flukes treatment definitely helped. I think that it may have been aggression, but I think that flukes as well was definitely something that was getting at the fish because they seem a lot healthier now. They're not scraping their gills against the rocks and the substrate and stuff. But yeah, I really appreciate all the comments because I know that I'm not an expert in African cichlids. I'm not always gonna get it right. So it really is helpful when you leave those comments and then it gives other people ideas as well of what could be going on. I'll see if I can find that red Eureka cichlid that was the one that I was really worried about that I thought maybe wasn't going to make it because she was quite battered of course she is hiding when I want to film her I'll just pop some flakes in to see if I can get the red Eureka cichlid to come out this is always the way it goes whenever I want to film a fish it always is hiding I see her she's under the rock which you see with her hiding in there too that possibly would suggest that she's been bullied or would very likely suggest that she is being bullied so she's just in here. I don't know if you can see her. You can see her little mouth just there. So she's survived, but definitely looking like she's being bullied still. So at least she's hanging in there. She was out before and looked okay. Okay, since it wouldn't be fair for me to do it to you guys and not feed you if I feed the African cichlids, let's give these guys some food too. They normally get fed at night, so this is a little bit special for them making a special exception for filming. These guys are so messy though. Actually, they all are messy. But I'll just remember to put my lid back on. If anyone's interested too, these are netted lids from NVS Aquariums. So they're custom made. You just give them the dimensions and they can ship them internationally as well. If you just Google them, they come up and or you can find them on Facebook and send them a message if you're interested. Let's not forget to put that back on. Beautiful. This is Layla. Layla is just over a year old now, I think maybe like a year and a half old, and so she's a little parrotlet. That's their actual name is parrotlet, so they're parrots, but they're just parrots in very tiny bodies, but they've got a really big attitude. She was hand raised and everything, so that was a good start, but she is getting a little bit better. She's just a bit noisy sometimes when I'm doing the filming. She seems to know when I'm talking to the camera and stuff, and then kind of wants a little bit of attention. So, but yeah, that's her little cage that she lives in. As some of you who've followed the channel for a while might know, this tank here has been set up since mid-2021. So it's more than a couple years old now. I did move once though with it into a townhouse that's identical to the one that I used to have it set up in. But then this tank here, I used to have it as a river scape that Jason from Australian Biotopes did an awesome job on. However, it just wasn't my kind of thing. I kept it for almost a year, but I just found that I, I really wanted to end up with some cichlids in here because uh, the rainbow fish that I had in the river scape were beautiful but they just weren't really my type of fish I found and I'm not really into planted tanks and stuff as you can probably see I really like my hardscapes so that's why I ended up making the change and I did a full video on that a couple of months back if you want to check it out. Most people tend to start with these ones which are the Lake Malawi cichlids and so African cichlids are very cool fish they're very unique because they actually come from only three lakes in the entire world they're probably the closest freshwater fish you can get to salt water in terms of color. And then also they lack quite hard water. So it's about an 8.2 pH for the Malawi cichlids over there. And then these guys can actually go more like an 8.6 pH as well. These are the neotrets here. 
they used to be called poor men's front toses because if anyone's familiar with African cichlids you might notice they look like another type of Tanganyikan cichlid called a front toser that get quite a bit bigger and the males have like a big hump on their head so king of DIY Joey Mullen has a front toser tank like a little colony of front toser in there that you might have seen but these are all their fry over here this has been their favorite spot to breed in they keep trying here so that's the the bigger one there is the male and then that bright one there is the female and she does a really good job just hanging there and guarding them in the corner and I've got like a little rock kind of cave system all through here and the trophies they tend to like hang around here and graze and they don't mind because they just kind of keep this little corner here and the dad chases away any fish that get too close and then the mum just kind of hangs down around here and still gets a bit of food I think because when I feed them it kind of floats towards the sump she can kind of grab some food that comes down in the area there but it would be pretty cool if they actually like raise their fry I'm guessing that they might get a Little bit better and better at doing it it'll just take a bit of time let me know what you think i should do should i just let them naturally keep having babies do you think that i should try and get some fry out and grow them up at some point i think i'd have to get like a turkey baster and like suck them out or something i don't know how i feel about that the parents i don't want to stress them out i want them to get better at raising their fry but then it would also be kind of cool to maybe be able to let some babies survive at some point i don't know let me know in the comments what you think i should do also you might have noticed too that i'm wearing a merch shirt right now it's got a little african cichlid on it. it says I love African cichlids and Katie's cichlids I just got some merch samples I've got a bunch of different designs that my cousin did for me again bless you Kyla she also made the logo for this channel so she's been doing an awesome job they're not for sale just yet because at the moment these are just samples that I got I literally went to the gym in this because I wanted to test and see how it deals with like sweat and stuff and I was like I'm not gonna sweat anywhere else anywhere more than what I do at the gym even if it's like a fish room or something so I just wanted to to test that I've got like some cotton ones which this is feeling really good and I just wanted to check the designs and stuff like this one for example I think that should probably gum up a little bit but once I get a material that I'm happy with and I think it's good quality and I'm happy with all the designs and everything I'll put them up for sale and I'll have some mugs and stuff like that as well I think you'll really like them they're really cool the other thing I just wanted to mention too since it's the start of the year just to give you a bit of an idea of some plans for the year as well so I will be going back to America in the middle of the year again I'm like 99.999% sure. I won't share what I'll be doing just yet, but if there's anyone in particular in America that you would like to see me collaborate with, let me know because then if you're interested, I can probably reach out and just see if that person would be interested in collaborating too. So if there's anyone you'd like to see me go back to, anyone that I haven't collaborated with that you think would be cool to see a collaboration with, let me know. Definitely keen to see Brian Barczyk's Legacy Aquarium when I go back. I think that's gonna be really awesome. So that's what's to come, I'm very excited for that and then in terms of here it will really just be growing out these Tanganyika cichlids monitoring seeing how this mix goes I might add some more trophies at some point to get some more color in there but we'll see these guys I just love this tank I'm really happy with it as is I don't really have plans to add more fish or anything in there so we'll just keep going with that maybe try and get the water a little bit less green get another UVC in there would be some plans and then in terms of any other tanks the one thing that I have had on my mind for a little while is potentially doing like a little kind of goldfish pond outside in this area I'll show you what it looks like out here I've got this like tiny little backyard area but there's definitely space in this sitting area here if I was to just put like a little pond or something like that I think it could look really pretty oh I'm not gonna open that door because I have a bird on my shoulder I'm thinking like something out here maybe some goldfish maybe some rice fish I don't know something like that I'm thinking but let me know what you think because I'm definitely open to suggestions, but I just really want it to be something I can not have to maintain too much, which is why I'm probably thinking that it would probably be best um, for it to be maybe smaller fish instead of goldfish, because I think goldfish would probably need too big of a pond and would be difficult to maintain unless I only had a couple in there. So I don't know, let me know what you think. As always, if you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying my content, don't forget to like the video, commenting always helps, and you can subscribe as well. And hit that little bell icon if you want to be notified each time that I upload new content on this channel, which is normally weekly. Sometimes it stretches out to fortnightly, but normally weekly. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.